Well, my little one, it's just about time. How long I've waited to create you, see you come to life. How long has it been? Must be, uh... <laughs> well, I guess you've always been in my mind. I think I'm able to create life with just these little things. But you know there'll be some people who will deny that you're alive. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Because you and I you are alive. I must give you a name. If something is alive, it has to have a name. Now, let's see. You are my prototype. Yes. Since you are the first I built, your name shall be Adam. Okay, Adam, just one more. All right. Let's get you hooked up. Just the scope a bit. There be life. Oh, look at you. So precious. You are so wonderful. You are so marvelous. Oh, now that I know that you work, I, I will have to make more of you. Oh, this will take all winter. Every night I must work to make more of you. And what will I do with you? I know I will have my students take care of you. You shall be the spring project for my junior biology class. Life, it's a class project. Jason, just let me go. Just as soon as you tell me what time I can pick you up tonight. Jason. I can't believe how good you were to go last night. Jason. You are something else. Jason, my mother's beginning to ask me questions. About how good I am? No, about why I didn't get home until 2 this morning. Now, I'll tell you after class. Just let me go. I'll think about you all hours. Mr. Salem, was I in class yesterday? Yes, you were, Mr. McKinley. Did I learn anything? No. 
Am I going to learn anything today? That depends. On what? On you. Well, he won't learn anything then. <laughs> Sit down, Jason. But, Mr. Jason. Salem... Sit down. Hey, Mr. Salem, what's under the curtain? You hiding something from us? Well, actually... Well, let me begin to tell you about what is under the curtain by asking a question. What is life? Oh, life is when something is alive? Are you asking a question or making a statement? Okay, okay. Life is when something is alive. <laughs> but what does it mean to be alive? Amber. Life exists when an organism can sustain itself through its own energy, efforts, or resources. Yeah, this genius speaks again. <laughs> but if that is true, if an organism is alive when it can sustain itself through its own energy, efforts, or resources, how does it get to the state of being able to do that? Emily. It is the result of reproduction. Ah. Is reproduction necessary for life? Sure. And what is necessary for reproduction? <laughs> My mom and dad. <laughs> you are right, Willie. Human life does not just happen by itself, does it? It is not a singular activity. Human life begins and exists in the plural. What is this? A DNA molecule. Yeah. Now, each cell of your body has one of these. This collection of chemical substances provides all the information each cell needs to grow, reproduce, and maintain metabolic function. It is like a program in the computer. It provides the necessary information. Well, Mr. Salem, a DNA molecule is not alive. Bingo, you are right. There is still something missing from our definition of human life. Like what? How many of you own computers? Well, is this computer here, just sitting here like that, of any value? I say about a thousand bucks. <laughs> not material value, is it of any value to you just sitting there like that? If I could get into it and give myself an A in this class. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way you could get an A. <laughs> so, the um, hardware and software will only have real value if used by something conscious of its value, correct? That rules him out. So that while an organism is defined as having life when it can, has metabolic function, is capable of reproduction, is able to grow, some say that the defining element is consciousness. The state of realizing one is alive, is able to make choices, and is aware of one's own mortality. Is that what life is? Does that mean that if someone's in a coma that they're dead? Before we address the issue of death, when do you think life begins? At birth? How many of you agree that life begins at birth? Well, that's a majority of you. But now, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> if life begins at birth, is it possible for a fetus to die? Yeah. But how can something die if it's not alive? Wait a minute, man. You're playing a mind game with us. No, I am not. You see, if you all agree that life begins at birth and yet at the same time say that it is possible for a fetus prior to birth to die, then life must exist 
before it can be observed. So you, what you're saying is that at the moment of conception, there is life? Absolutely. I don't agree with that. Well, whether you agree with it or not does not change the truth. Well, how do you know that? Because you can go to prison for breaking the egg of a bald eagle. What? The federal government says that if you break the egg of an eagle, you kill an eagle. So therefore, life must exist at conception, even when it can't be observed or measured. Otherwise, you wouldn't have killed an eagle. Okay, what does all this have to do with what's under the curtain? Everything. I have created a program, much like the information contained in a DNA molecule. This program contains the potential for life. And I have placed this program in a very special device that each and every one of you will have the opportunity to care for. Now come on up here. It will be like no other life you have ever experienced. Allow me to introduce you to 18 of my most prized possessions. Class, these are my children. A and I created each one for the purpose of teaching you about life. Um, how can one of those teach us about life? Well, what I hold in my hand may not seem like much, may not look like much, may not in fact even be much. But within the circuitry of this little box is the potential for life. I've given each one a name, and I have designed one for each one of you. And I've given each a personality. Now, if you agree to join in this project, I will give one to each of you. Wait a minute, so you're saying that we don't have to do this? No. Life begins with a choice. Husband and wife decide to have a child. This project will begin with you choosing to take part in it. So if we don't do it, we're going to get a bad grade? No. I would prefer that you be honest and tell me that you don't want to take care of one of my children than to have you abuse it, or ignore it, or kill it. Now, when I call out your name, I will give you one. Just take it back to your seat. Do not touch anything. And if you choose, to take one, you will be deciding to start its life and then to take care of it. Willie? Kimberly? Paul? Mike? Jason McKinley. Jason McKinley? Hey, man. Looks like Jason's too cool to play this game. Yeah, why would he want a kid? It's not like he ever was one or anything. <laughs> hey, Mr. Sim, what are all these buttons for? Please, do not touch anything. After I have distributed the children, I will give you the instruction sheet. Everything you will need to know about how to care for your child will be on that sheet. Well, someone to give my dad the instruction sheet. Emily, uh, Emily, Emily Watson, Emily Watson, Emily Watson. In a moment, the class project will begin. Now I'd like each of you to gently hold your child in your hand. You'll notice on the bottom right-hand corner is a small white button. Once that button is pressed, your child will have life. Now, if you are ready to care for the life I have given you, 
press the white button now. Hey, Mr. Salem, my, my baby's broke. Can't do anything. You're right, Michael. And it will do nothing for the next three days. Your children are in a state of gestation. You will see nothing. But let me assure you, your child is alive. Mr. Salem, what does this red button do? Well, what do you do when you see a red light? Stop? Yes. There are only two ways your child will die. Over the next three days, you may press this red button, and in doing so, abort the life of your child. The second is if you drop it. If that happens, your child will die of its injuries. Remember, there is life in your hand. It exists, it is real, it is yours. I am entrusting it to you. You're nuts, man. What's wrong with Rain? You ain't even trying to win. Looks to me like you ain't even trying to play. You know what? I got better things to do than to put up with this. Go home. Yeah, I don't know what your problem is, but I don't want to be a part of it. I didn't know we were in wine country. Go home. I don't need you. Looks like you don't need nothing. Work on that shot, Jason. Can I have my ball? Well, man, just give me the ball and go away. Will that cause you not to be so angry? It's none of your business whether I'm angry or not. Give me the ball. Why didn't you take the child that I made for you? It's none of your business. Well, it is my business. No, it's not. Because you said I had a choice. Yes, but with the choice comes the responsibility of defending that choice. I don't have to tell you nothing. Are you afraid that William will die? I don't have time for silly games. Jason. Life and death is not a game.
Take your seats, please. Hurry, we've got a lot to do today. Hey, Mr. Salem. Uh, my baby's love light won't stop blinking. What's that mean? You read the instructions, didn't you? Yeah, I know what to do, but I mean, Benny doesn't want to be put down. I mean, it's like he can't get enough of my loving or something like that. Well, like all my children, Benny can sense the slightest change in your breathing rate pulse rate or tone of voice. Apparently, Benny senses that you have a great deal of love to give and that you enjoy it very much. Hey, that must mean I'm a love machine. Oh, yeah, you. <laughs> now, what it means is that you are a very sensitive and very caring person. Oh. Now, did any of you make the choice to abort your children before they appear to come to life? What caused you to make that decision? I uh, had a term paper due in Mr. Warren's class. I ran out of time for this one. Did you make that decision after activating my term? Yeah. Were you aware of the term paper before you activated it? Yeah. I see. Miss Barlow. Well, it was my mom. Okay, she, she read her instruction sheet. Something about how this thing makes noise when it needs something, right? She didn't want to hear it. She, she told me to cut it off. And you did? Yeah. <laughs> you do not know my mother. <laughs> Well, I am proud of those of you who have chosen to allow my children to live. Well, let's see how the rest of you are doing as parents. Paul, if you can form a line to the left of my uh, desk, let me download my children's experiences so far. Paul, it seems that Tommy could use a little more attention. More? Man, this class project takes longer than my term paper. What type of mark did you get then on your last term paper? I got an A. C minus. Maybe if your parents paid more attention to their son, you might have gotten a better mark. I get the point, man. Willie, let's see how Lonnie's doing. Shows no visible sign of life. Willie, Willie, what have you done to my child? <laughs> Let me see that. Hmm. <laughs> well, actually, I noticed the other day that there seemed to be a, a you know, a, a circuit related anomaly. Yeah, yeah. There seemed to be a sequential, yes, yes, sequential difference in, in the random pattern of, 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 of some of the things there. How did you drop it? <laughs> drop it? Really, the sensor shows that Lonnie's life was terminated three days ago at 3.26 p.m. That would be right after school. It really wasn't my fault, Mr. Salem. 
it was your responsibility to care for my child. You agreed when this project began to care for the child. It was your responsibility to protect it. I was showing it to some of the guys after school, and they were laughing at me for even agreeing to even take it. One of the guys grabbed it and they started playing keep away. I, I jumped up to try and catch it. It fell out of my hand. As you know, I said this was a class project. Human life does not exist by itself or in a vacuum. There is a responsibility that each person has to those around him. Because that is true, I am deducting five points from everyone's grade because of what happened to Willie's child. Excuse me, Mr. Salem, that isn't fair. Jason, I do not believe that you are involved in this project. That's the way you're gonna grade. I'm glad I'm not. Would you feel differently if Willie had deliberately ended the life of his child? That would be murder. People don't have the right to end a life. You're right, Jason. And if you saw somebody getting ready to end the life of another and didn't do anything, would you not be part of that death? You're talking about something you know nothing about. Answer my question. If you knew somebody had ended the life of another and didn't do anything, would you not be just as guilty? This is Eli Salem. Is this the Mr. Salem that teaches at Central High? Yes, it is. May I help you? My name is Emma Watson. I'm Emily's mother. Emily is in the intensive care unit at Mercy Hospital. She tried to kill herself, and she wrote a note saying you would know why. Mrs. Watson, is Emily all right? The doctors are pumping her stomach now. They said she took some sort of pill or something. I don't know what she meant. Mrs. Watson, neither do I. Emily has always thought so highly of you. If you've done anything to hurt my daughter, I'll... Mrs. Watson, let me assure you, I am your daughter's biology teacher and nothing more. Mr. Salem, I don't mean to accuse you of anything. It's just that Emily has always been... Yes, she's always been very special. Mr. Salem, the doctor's coming down the hall. Would you like me to uh, come to the hospital? Would you please? Yes, it will take me a little while to catch the bus, but I'll be there just as soon as I can. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello, Jason. 
I'm on my way to the hospital. Emily's mother called and said she tried to kill herself. Do you have any idea why she might do something like that? She what? Oh, man, that's stupid. That may be, but do you know why? Eli, do we have a schedule to keep? Just a minute, Gabriel. Why would I know something like that? I think you should come with me. No, thanks, man. I don't do hospitals. Besides that, why are you going? What, are you related to her or something? No, Emily's mother called and said she left a note and said I would know why she tried to end her life. What? Eli, we really got to go. Pain for two, Gabriel. Hey, kid. He paid for two. Are you riding or hiding? <laughs> with someone very close to you when they died at a hospital, weren't you? You think it will hurt too bad if you go back? If that is true, why are you on this bus? My mom, Mr. Salem. She died when I was 11, but I wasn't with her. How did she die? My father killed her. She was in a car crash. And she was in a coma and on all that life support stuff. Doctors said they didn't know whether she'd wake up. And if she did, they didn't know whether she'd be able to walk or talk or anything. The doctor said, since she wasn't brain dead, they, they, they couldn't advise turning off the breathing, breathing machine. My dad told me and my sister that the best thing to do was to let her die with dignity. He said he was alone in the room with her, and he pulled the plug out of the wall. <laughs> I didn't even get to say goodbye. This is so bad. <laughs> he didn't have a right to do that. I hate him so much. <laughs> you afraid to love anyone? <laughs> no love, no hurt. <laughs> That's why you didn't want to take care of William. Don't start on me about your toys, man. I don't even know why I got on this bus with you. I think it's best if we keep her overnight for observation. Is Emily all right? Are you Emily's grandfather? No, actually, I, I, I'm her science teacher. I understand you know what happened. Well, Emily seems to think so, but I don't really know what happened or why. Mr. Salem, Emily's going to be just fine. The doctor said she just took too much aspirin to give herself a good stomachache. Well, that certainly is good news. 
Did she say anything to you about why she did this? No. She just said in her letter that you would know why. Uh, Mrs. Watson, I really think you should consider having Emily admitted to the stress center and getting her emotional help. Yes, I will. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Um, Mrs. Watson. No, no, it's Emma. Oh, that was my mother's name. Also the name of my youngest yeah. child. Emily's my only child. <laughs> Her father left us when she was six. And I, and it's really been tough. Ever since Emily was 12 years old, I really, you know, I haven't known what to do with her. I mean, she started smoking and running around with the wrong crowd. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, she's, if she got pregnant and had an abortion. I, I just don't know what to do. And then I think that she's using drugs and the doctor wants me to take her to a psychiatrist and I don't have any money. And her father has never <laughs> fixed her. And I, May I see her? Oh, oh, oh yes, yeah, so, okay. I'm sorry, I just start talking and I, I can't shut up. You should know that she got her stomach pumped and she has charcoal all over her face. By myself, please. Oh, yes, all, all right. Go right ahead. Well, Miss Watson, you seem to have me over a barrel. You try to kill yourself, and you leave a note saying that I know why. Now, why would you do something like that? It appears you think I know everything, that I'm able to read minds, that I'm responsible for your behavior. People will begin to think I did something terrible to you now, won't they? And all I asked of you was to take care of one of my children. Is that too much to ask? Jason, what does he have to do with this? I saw you. I saw you guys talking at the playground last week. Yes, I did talk with Jason, but we weren't talking about you. Yeah, right. He you know, probably told you everything I told him. Young lady, I don't know what you think Jason told me. But the truth of the matter is, is that he said very little. I did most of the talking. I asked him why he would not take care of one of my children and take part of the class project. I guess I have to ask you the same question. You mean Jason didn't tell you anything about what happened to me? No, he didn't. You mean I tried to kill myself for no reason? Well, there must have been a reason, otherwise you wouldn't have tried. Well, I'm glad I didn't try any harder. <laughs> well, I am certainly very glad you didn't try harder, too. <laughs> I didn't want to. But I 
he said he'd leave and never see me again if I didn't get the abortion. Oh, Jason? No. Well, if it wasn't Jason, how would he know and why would you think he would tell me? Jason lives next door to me. We talk a lot. He tried to talk me out of getting the abortion. He even told me he'd marry me and say he was the father. He told me about his mother. He said I didn't have the right to do to my baby what his father did to his mother. Well, Jason was right. No one but the creator of life has the right to end life. No one. But he said he'd leave and never see me again. Is he going to marry you anyway? No. <laughs> he dumped me after I got the abortion. Is that why you didn't want to take care of one of my children? I didn't do very well with my own baby, did I? Jason was right. I'm just like his father. But what if you could start all over again? Would you still have an abortion? If I had it to do all over again, I wouldn't have to worry about getting an abortion because I wouldn't have gotten pregnant. But what if you could really start all over? Emily Watson. Emily Watson. Emily Watson. Hey, sweet beauty. You better wake up. Old man Salem's calling your name. Did I miss anything? Yeah. The old man's handing out his toys. You gonna take one? This is my most special one. Emma will need a lot of care, and she will need a mother who understands the value of life. That is why I chose you. Hey, what's up with you? I thought we were getting together tonight. In your dreams. A child is too precious to be a mistake. I think for right now, I'm just gonna let life be a class project. Could see how 
precious you would be God knew your name And he held you so close In his loving hand And he wanted all to see That before the light of day Shined on your little face God knew your name Before you walked around Before you first fell down God knew your name Before you rode your track Then that first red bike God knew your name with you every day right there by your side even when you made mistakes and before the light of day shined on your little face God knew your name before those wedding bells Rang their story well God knew your name Before that first new home And children of your own God knew your name And through all the times Both the good and bad He had Shined on your little face God knew your name As you gracefully grew old You know you had been told God knew your name One day when you died, your friends and family cried, God knew your name, and my angels carried your soul to me, and I said, welcome home, you were one of mine, I loved you for all time. I knew your name You were one of mine I loved you for all time I knew